Hey everybody and welcome, my name is Sakoda and we're going to be playing a game called Monster Loves You. Uh, from what I know, it's kind of a choice game, not too sure about much of the detail. Um, I think it's best off that we just start playing this game and we'll see where we go. Let's do this. Alright, help me begin your story. How does it go again? <clears throat> Long ago, deep in the forest, monsters call the Whale Mist. Uh, that's right, long ago, nestled in the heart of the forest, was the monster village of Omen. You are born from the slime that holds the memory of monsters known for... Actions and attitude, or words and thoughts? Uh, actions and attitude! Uh, you're not awake yet, but soon your first eye will open. Your simple dreams will give away to, uh, life itself. You dream of fighting and eating and screaming, facing frightening enemies unafraid, or protecting, protecting innocent monsters from harm. Um, we will face frightening enemies unafraid. That gives us some bravery stat, apparently. Your body is turning and twisting, growing solid in the middle of a great vat of green slime. It's time to be born. Okay. Alright, so I guess uh, we click to be born. What's all this stuff here? We have bravery. Bravery is your capacity to overcome fear and intimidation. One demonstrates bravery through courageous actions. We can get up to 100 on it. Uh, you can be clever. Clever wit brain, it's how strong your mind is and how well you can suss out non-violent solutions to problems. Alright, uh, ferocity. Sometimes you need to be cruel. Can you bring yourself to tear a wolf apart with your claws to show you're a monster? How about its cubs? Uh, okay. That's like the evil side. <laughs> Honest monsters are known for their truthfulness, loyalty, and commitment to justice. If you're known for honesty, others will trust you more. Alright, and then there's kindness. Kindness is the genuine desire to help others without expectation of reward. Healers tend to be kind. Um, not much of a healer type. Not usually, at least. I guess, uh, time to be born. You awaken in the thawing season, when the ground is soft and wet. Onward! Your eye is open. You are a morsel, just barely born. You float in the spawning vat. Dozens of other morsels are exploring, flailing, and stealing food from each other. Uh, let's see. Let's try kicking out your legs. You bend and squirm, making your tiny legs grow and strengthen. Uh, let's swim around the vat, I guess. Your legs are strong, but more importantly, you feel no fear. Darn straight, rootin' tootin' ready for shootin'. Uh, you paddle in a circle, then go back and forth, ignoring other morsels who hiss and spit at you. Uh, that's because we're happy. Another morsel swims towards you. It opens its mouth to show a set of small, sharp teeth. It bites you. Aye! Swim away from the toothy morsel, or what? This is intolerable. Stop that biting. Uh, we will tell it to stop. You pause, unable to believe that another morsel is trying to eat you. After a moment, you snap out of it and start to move again. Uh, resist it kill it, or unite other morsels to repel the attack. <laughs> um, I mean, it's it's just learning. I, I guess it's no big deal right now. I'm not out to kill anything. You push the hungry morsel away with your little arms, but it circles around you and tries to bite you again. Your legs grow stronger as you kick and shove. You will not be food. Refuse to be anyone's first meal, or last meal for that matter. Uh, you climb on top of the other morsel and force it to the bottom of the swam and spawning pipe vat. It starts to break up into pieces as it struggles. Um, let it go or hold it down. I mean, it is just a killer. We're gonna hold it down. <laughs> you hold the morsel down until it's just a collection of mindless, solid clumps settling among the other clumps to begin the cycle of life anew. Such is the fate of those who try to intimidate you. Splash, flutter, splish, squeak. Another morsel is too weak to swim properly. It's sinking toward the bottom of the vat. I ignore it and swim on. Too bad, but these things happen. Oh no, that's terrible. Um, uh, depends on if it tries to bite me or not. We're going to say, oh no, that's terrible. You feel a deep sense of injustice at the smaller morsels impending demise. If only you could do something about it. Let's do something about it! You swim to the morsel, determined to act. Um, we're going to get under it and push it up to the surface. As you push up, the morsel's dead weight forces you down. Your legs come to rest against the bottom of the spawning vat, where you begin to squish. Uh, keep pushing, we're not giving up. Your feet are breaking up among the solid clumps, oh shit. Uh-oh. Um. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Time to give up. The little morsel watches silently as you wriggle to one side. For a moment, you are at the same depth. Swim away! 
Uh, you somehow sense that the morsel would thank you if it could. At least you tried. Uh, we're not gonna feel terrible. It, it's about it. You move on trying to forget what you've seen. Eventually the memory grows dull and dim. Forget about that little morsel. You have grown too big for the spawning vat. You must move on to the next stage of life and become a monsterling! Um, <laughs> force yourself to not grow up. <laughs> You're going to get into some trouble, which is great. Exercise your bravery, cleverness, ferocity, kindness, and honesty. What kind of monster will you be? Uh, indeed, to the broad cave. Um, Alright, so is there like anything I can click other than what's the pop-up here? The top bit shows how many days you have left until your next stage of life, and the bottom shows how much respect you have amassed. What's respect? Impress other monsters, and they'll talk about how amazing you are. There, the more respect you gain in the earlier stages of life, the greater power you'll wield later on. So we want to gain respect. Uh, here we go. Choose your adventure. What the hell are these? Can I figure out what they are before I click them? <laughs> Nash, Nash, and uh, Gobclaws are racing to the ceiling of the cave. They've already climbed way up when Gobclaws invites you to join them. You don't see a good way up though. Uh, look at the paths they took and copy them. Just face up to it, admit you aren't much of a climber, or make a fair effort, but stop before you get hurt. You get hurt. Stop before you get hurt! Um, I'm gonna look at the path and try to copy them. You follow National's claw marks halfway up the cave wall, then slip sideways to where Cobb Gloves was being more careful. You meet them at the top, to their surprise. SURPRISE! Alright, so that gave us some cleverness. Uh, we're only at 15. Our bravery is at, what, 18? Interesting little uh, sensation here. Let's see. Uh, big old ham rag comes to the cave with a box full of metal cans. What's this? He says, it's drink or douse day. These cans are full of what the humans call soda pop. Monsterlings drink soda pop? Uh, bubbly liquid sugar? You bet. But they also like to see who can chug the most, or endure the most exploding metal cans at once. Uh, see how many exploding cans you can withstand, or show everyone your belly can hold the most soda pop. Uh, we're gonna take the dousing. The other monsterlings go through the cans, picking out the bulging indented ones. Climb into that big clay jar with the bad cans. <laughs> you hear shaking sounds, shoosh, 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 and waka 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 waka, and so on. And more and more cans are piled on top of you. Uh, maybe this is a bad idea, let me out, or no, keep it up, it's time to blow things up. There we go. Uh, everything is shaking in here, somebody's kicking the jar. Too late to get out now. Uh, the next thing you know, Nash Nash is dragging you behind her on a forest path. Uh, what happened? You can't seem to speak, but Nash Nash sees you trying. She turns you, and you realize you're just a head and part of a body. Ah! 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 Uh, she says, we've been picking up pieces of you for hours. Oh, oh. Oh. You won, little monsterling. Now let's put together your pieces and see if you heal. Wait, he doesn't know if a monsterling can heal from this? This is gonna be a problem. Look, uh, you just raised your claw. You're recovering. Doesn't that make you happy? Uh, sure. Sure. Ah, uh, we have six days left now. We gained more cleverness and more bravery. Let's, um, what's this? What, what are these? What's this? Uh, you notice a puddle of glowing slime at the back of the cave. It pulses like a heartbeat. Blotch shoves you towards it, daring you to eat it. Don't be a human baby! Uh, Blotch should have this. Get away from Blotch and the slime. Blotch should have it! <laughs> Indeed, but how? Uh, shove him into the slime or tell he can eat it himself? Uh, how, how are we? Are we really mischievous? Yeah, we're mischievous. We're gonna shove him into the slime. Yeah, you, you grab Blots and toss him right into the middle of the puddle. No! No! He scuttles away as the slime dissolves his claws and all the fur, all the fur from his bottom. Oh god! I'm glad I didn't take that. Uh, yeah. Ferocity is pretty important here. Uh, you stumble on a rock and find a patch of purple li like lichen, lichen, lichen behind it. Your exclamation of delight draws Smark and Gobclaws over, but there's not really enough to share. Uh, let's see. What's so special about it? Tell them how to find some, invite them in anyway, or they're on to you, run away. Uh, what's so special about it? Uh, monsterlings mostly eat at night, mostly. And what you eat is lichen, mostly. The big lichen pile is familiar. 
but plain and boring. This is different. Aha! Uh -huh. Ah, uh, we can tell them how to find some. You tell them to follow damp trails left by little damp snails. They eat the lichen too, you explain. Smark and Gobclaws both grin. You eat the lichen. Delicious! Uh, but that was very clever of us. Why are we not getting any, um... You're halfway towards leaving and becoming an adolescent firm. Firm up your personality as much as you can. Okay. Okay, um... What's this? What's this? You notice a line of ants marching in and out of the cave. They seem to be building an ant hill. Ants? Let's take a closer look. They're red ants. They look angry. Big pincers in front, big stingers in back. Um... Leave the problem to Elder, <laughs> or deal with them before they bite everyone. How big are these ants? Are they like, like massive ants, or are they more like, just ants? Or are we like little people right now? Um. Uh, big red ants. Uh, leave it to the elder. I'll leave it to the elder. Oh man. No. <laughs> What's likely a weak and painful welts? That's what would happen. I lost some bravery though. That makes me sad. Uh, Nosh Nosh tumbles into you screaming and chased by Sickle, who is also screaming. Uh, stick your head under another monster link for some quiet, peace and quiet, or what's all this then? Uh, Nosh Nosh and Sickle are trying to make each other's ears bleed by screaming. Sickle is winning and Nosh Nosh is running. Uh, make Sickle stop, ask them politely what fun join in or stop them by screaming them down. Uh, pr we'll protect Nosh Nosh. Uh, your ears throb as you turn towards Sickle and wrath. Wag your claw at her, but it works. She stops and all is quiet for now. Alright. Alright. Alright, what's this fox? Probably some. A roly-poly fox stumbles into the broad cave, leans against a rock, and coughs. It looks vaguely at you and the other monsterlings, showing no fear. Uh, let's wait and see what happens. While you stand idly by, Nosh Nosh pounces on the fox, tears off its head, and eats it. Blots and Gobclaws move in for a few bites, which Nosh Nosh graciously shares them with you. I guess we might as well eat. By the time you do join in, there isn't much left. Nosh Nosh gives you a paw, which doesn't contain a lot of meat. Oh well, we didn't get much for that adventure. I guess I should have attempted to talk to the, uh... Uh, Blistery climbs up on top of the lichen pile. She refuses to let any other monsterlings eat, proclaiming herself ruler of the lichen pile. Uh, she's an idiot. Find the elder to stabilize the pile or gang up on her. We're gonna gang up. You gather a small force of monsterlings to teach her a lesson. What will you do? Split up and distract her. Uh, Nosh Nosh distracts the ruler of the lichen pile while uh, Blots and Verok knock her down. Very, very cool. Uh, I think we're done. Oh my! You wake up and find what that you're no longer a little monsterling. You're growing up. Elder Marinus calls the oldest monsterlings to gather in a group. You're one of the oldest ones now, so you should join them. She looks grave. Uh, let's go and see what's up. She shuffles down the long tunnel, turning this way and that amongst dozens of forking passages. I guess we'll follow. Uh, she stops in a warm, humid chamber with a pit in the floor. Uh, she points to the pit, which sees with thick mist. Uh, wait for her to make you go? She pushes you in with a sweep of her tail. Ah! Playfully swipe at her tail with your claws as you fall. <laughs> you fall and fall some more, uh, and then you fall. Uh, and you're falling. And are there other uh, other monsterlings falling? Yes, some of them are crying, and you can't wait to see through the mist. Uh, or is it fog? Maybe it's clouds. Uh, moans and groans and whispering screams. Where is this? It must be somewhere. Uh, you land on smooth, flat stone, despite the swearing vapor, the floor is dry as a bone. You hear other monsterlings breathing nearby. Some of them are still above you, still falling. Uh, try to cushion the fall or get out of the way? Well, try to cushion. We've been, we've been through some stuff. Uh, oof, you don't see who you helped. Whoever it is rolls away into the thick fog without a word. Gratitude is not important, I guess. You rejoin some of the monsterlings at the edge of the mist. There are more passages out of there then you can count. Some monsterlings begin to panic while others look determined. Uh, we should take charge. We're pretty, we're pretty smart. Uh, the other monsterlings watch you, curious. Lead the way, slash the others to show them you're, you're in charge, or help everyone work together. It's all about teamwork. 
you lead the other monsterlings in a resting song. <laughs> oh god, a rousing song. Putting aside their uh, trepidation, they advance into the twisting passages. Soon you have all convened in a cave full of even thicker mist. Where is everyone? We can't see each other. Oh boy, the chamber swirls with the mist fog and vapor, except it's not any of those things. It's ghosts! Hundreds of them, large and small. They're everywhere! Ah, spooky. One by one, the pale ghosts begin to turn their attention to you. Their eyes glow different colors. Uh, I guess we just gotta stand and watch. The ghosts speak in many voices, all hollow and distant, all in unison. They ask you, do you fear? Uh, yes, it's a scary attack them, or er, wait and say nothing. Wait and say nothing. The ghosts stare into and through you, as though you're the one made of mist. One sharp voice speaks from behind you. Why are you here? Uh, I'll lecture the ghosts about the monster cycle life. Attack them or bide your time. I'll lecture them about the monster cycle life. You take a deep breath and begin to explain how monsterlings make the change into adolescent monsters. Stress is like heat, cooking our minds and bodies so they can enter a new state of being. Uh, continue explaining. You go on. First, our growing bodies must be destabilized so we can take on our war device firms. And uh, then we must. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I forget what I was. Uh, you fall asleep. <laughs> you fall into a deep sleep. Uh, that's how we're doing so far. I guess. I don't know how we get the um, the one thing. You wake up inside a well, a pointed hovel. Uh, this is your new home. Uh, what should you be doing or start living as an adolescent monster? Let's start living as an adolescent monster. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, so he just says random things. I want to know how you get respect. Alright, so I have no respect still. I guess I didn't do anything to talk about how great I was. Uh, this place is huge. So I can talk to Blister, whoever that is. And that's about it. Alright, adventure in town. Let's do this one. You see Jaggery in a haze of buzzy, angry yellow bees. It looks like he stole a beehive off a tree and took it home. You can see why Honey is irresistible. Jaggery motions for you to help him. Uh, size up the situation, help him out. Don't in fear, nature is beautiful. Who cares about a few bee stings? Grab the honey. Um, I guess we'll help him out. Just standing there thinking about it, you get stung twice. The bees are getting angrier and angrier. He frowns and asks, what do we do? Put the hive near the smokehouse, wave them away for with your arms, or put the hive near a garden. Um, put it near a smokehouse? That would be the best way to get rid of it. It worked, the bees fall asleep, and you get the double clawful of stinger-free honey. Um, yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. Uh, spider. I like this one. You find Blistery crouched in the forest, petting a rather furry spider. It doesn't look too good. In fact, it's not moving at all. Uh... Uh, <laughs> prod the spider awake with a stick. <laughs> uh, let's help the spider with him. You take a moment to assess the situation. There's a whole web full of equally large spiders in the alleys beside him. Uh, dang. Uh, they seem tense, and you think they're staring at you. The sick spider shivers. Place it with the other spiders? No, you'll get eaten. Go find medicine or feed it some flies. We'll feed it some flies. You scurry off to Nosh Nosh's hovel, where there are always dead flies around, and scoops them up. Let's get them back to the spider. Soon the spider is cackling them, or cracking them with its little mandibles and sucking out their juices. Blistery is visibly relieved. Nice! Alright, so we got some kindness out of that. Not really what I was looking for. I don't even know what kind of monster I want to build. I guess we'll just play this normally. You, Nosh Nosh, and Gobclaws hide in a stand of prickly thorn bushes, watching human children run back to their bus. But what's that they left? Shiny, red, round things. It's a scooter! Uh, mine, battle for it, or first ease racist scooter to claim it. Uh, we'll battle for it. <laughs> Fangs, claws, tails, blood, you are strong, true, but not the strongest, not today. As she scoots off, you realize Nosh Nosh just wanted it more than you did, and now you need some bandages. Damn. We weren't strong enough. <laughs> Oh, well. Uh, what's this one? Elder Jaggery grabs your claw and drags you out of town. I need you to scare a pig for me, he says. Uh, here we go again. Jaggery sniffs the air and says, never mind, there it goes. 
<laughs> he gallops away, leaving you alone in a grassy meadow. Run home as fast as you can or explore a bit. We'll look around. As you oh shit, as you look around in the bushes, a ball rolls through them and comes to rest at your feet. Oh, uh, that's a human thing. Better run away or walk through the bushes. Um, are we avoiding humans? No, no, we won't avoid them. You see a human sitting in the middle of the meadow. It hasn't spotted you yet, but it looks up at the sound of your movement. Uh, the human looks at you, waves its arms, burps, and laughs. The sound sends shivers down your spine. Uh, we're watching, but we're ready to run. The human, still sitting, points at the bushes behind you. It makes a sound. It seems to be a very young, no more than a monsterling, or even a morsel. Um, give it back its ball. You can't bring yourself to come and reach, but you pick up the ball and roll it toward the humanling. The humanling laughs again. Enough, go home before something bad happens. You run along to Omen with a bit of new perspective and a story. The other monsters are impressed that you've interacted with a human. Alright, that gave us 1%. That's, that's great. That's not going to save us much. Greed Blitz walks past your stoop. He stops, coughs, and tilts his head, proudly showing off his... Bay's paw hat. It, it makes him look ridiculous. Kind of looks like baseball. So baseball. That's that's interesting little twist. Um. Uh, tell him it looks spectacular, but it doesn't. Uh, be polite and non-committal. <laughs> he nods, tips his hat to you, and moves on. Oh, that was a really crappy little side thing. I should have like insulted him or something. After the rain, the last puddles linger. Looking into one, you see hundreds of tiny, reeling bugs. Uh, look at the little bugs. The tiny bugs come to the surface of the puddle, breathe a little air, then swim down again. They don't seem to be fighting each other. How odd. Well, might as well eat them, or study the bugs closely. Might as well eat them. You try to scoop up the little bugs with your claws, but they're too small. Most of them flow back into the puddle along with the water. Uh, suck up the water and swallow the bugs, or oh yeah, squish the bugs. <laughs> mm, not bad, each bug has almost no flavor, but as a mouthful, they have a satisfying squirmy texture. Yay! Our cleverness and our bravery is pretty high up there. Um, what else do we have going on here? What's this one? Another field one. It's such a nice day today. Perfect weather to wander outside of town, though you're not really supposed to leave Omen until you're older. Uh, just take a nap in the sun right here in the square or walk the forest paths. We're going to be a little crazy. Uh, what glorious weather. The sun is shining, the birds are singing, squirrels are squirreling things away in their squirrel homes. Um, let's keep walking, why not? You really don't see why young monsters are supposed to stay in town. What's going to hurt you out here? A squirrel? A tree? I guess we got to keep walking now. Hey, what's, what's that? You think you see a bear? Or is it a human? Uh, that could be trouble. Turn around. Nope, it's just a twig snapping. Uh, you soon forget the sound of the snapping twig. It was probably a friendly badger or a clumsy bear. Silly old bear. Stepping on. Snap. There it goes again. Uh, better get home or no, it's fine. Keep walking. You hear the sound again. Then two more. Times in rapid succession. Something is behind you. Under the cover of the trees. Uh, get out of there, monster, or get ready to fight. You can beat any animal in these woods. We can beat any animal. It's a human carrying a weapon made of wood and string. Uh, it? She? Uh, she uses the weapon to fling another thing in your direction. Ah, no! Uh, the sh Oh, God. The sharp thing jabs you into the <laughs> into you and you shriek. The pain is worse than any claw or tooth. It's not a deadly wound, but it eats at your body and mind. Um, no time to be sneaky or hide in the trees. Hide in the trees! You duck into another row of trees and stay out of sight. The human flings two more wooden things in your direction, but you stay quiet and she moves on. Alright, let's run home as soon as it's safe. You manage to hightail it out of there uh, with your hide intact. You tell her friends who shudder at the account. Uh, so we still have a little percentage left. I did lose some stuff there. That's crazy. Um, what about this food one? You sniff the air. <laughs> Could that be frosting? Blots greets you and Nosh Nosh with a fluffy pink cake. Nosh Nosh says, Blots says, he stole this from a human child. How do you three share it? 
Uh, first one to the center wins, distract the others, or it's a human cake, think about it. You know, like humans would. Uh, first one to the center wins. Uh, the three of you circle the cake and plunge into your faces, eating until the plate's clean. Then you eat the plate. Perfect. Uh, what's left? This angry looking one. Outside your home, Nosh Nosh charges from a nearby bush and sends you tumbling. Challenge! She screams at the top of her voice. It's on! Uh, leap at her and crush her. Square off and wait for Nosh Nosh to make a mistake. Or take turns slapping each other. Or decline her challenge. We'll square off. Uh, there! Nosh Nosh swings and misses. Uh, wait for a better opportunity or take your shot. Take our shot! Vroom! You lunge forward and knock her out. The day is yours. You look around proudly, but nobody noticed your little scuffle. Ah, uh, darn. Adolescence is fleeting. You have grown beyond youth and have become an adult. Yay! You've been dragged from your bed by your friends and neighbors. Trying to sleep here, fight them, or what, who, the, where, why now? <laughs> what, who, the, where, why now? Uh, they tell you it's time to grow up. You're taken into the woods. The, the neighbors throw you into the center of a great circle of monsters, all older than you. They whisper to each other, then look at you, then whisper some more. Uh, get on, getting on! The monsters murmur and mutter, spit and snarl. They're deciding what best to find you as a monster. Uh, yell at them to hurry up, take a nap, or wait patiently. Um, guess wait patiently. After a while, the muttering stops. Though the murmuring goes on for some long time, for t some time longer, finally the assembled monsters come to a decision. Well, what is it? The ring of monsters shuffles closer to you, forming a tighter circle. Elders loom over you while other smaller adults crouch low. Your surroundings grow shadowy and dark. Uh, do your part in the ceremony of adaptation, or wait, what's happening? Uh, do our part, the monster? The other monsters hold you in some respect. Um, good for them. Someone calls you clever. A war of approval rises from the crowd. <laughs> and all the monsters in the circle begin to hum, growl, and sing. It's a traditional serenade to the snake moon. Uh, figure out the counterpoint and impress them. Uh, let's do that. We have a lot of bravery. Impressive! Everyone cheers as you improve the song in an entirely new way. Um, now to compose a new and better tune. Yes! You whip up an uh, intemporaneous, intemporaneous, intemporaneous melody that rocks them where they stand. The monsters ooh and ah. Some of them start humming the new tune. They'll be humming it for days. Now then. Uh, looks like we gained a lot more respect because of that. Because of our cleverness. You're an adult now! You'll grow stronger over time. But your personality is no longer as mutable as it was when you were young. Onboard to adulthood. Uh, politic with monsters or explore the whale mist. Uh, I guess we need to politic a little bit. No, uh, yes. The snake moon is rising in the sky, and it's time to gather snakes for the ritual. Other monsters will bring plenty of snakes, stay home, or set out to gather, we'll set out to gather snakes. You wander the fields near the whale mist. It's easy to catch snakes, but every time you reach for another one, some of them squirm out of your grasp. Most of your snakes are getting away. <laughs> not anymore, they're not. Kill the snakes as you catch them, or keep, we'll keep catching them alive. Everyone claps when you arrive with three living snakes hanging from you by their fangs. <laughs> the venom hardly stings at all. Uh, the snakes are added to the cauldron along with a mass of other snakes, some are writhing and others lying still. Join the circles, a ritual begins. Alright, we gain some more respect at least. Uh, let's check the whale mist here. Uh, there's another snake one, let's just see what this one does. You take the lead on a hunt in the whale mist, but you've become separated from the group. Suddenly, you catch the sight of something. There. Where? Uh, within the thickest... Thicket. Thickets. Thicket. Rumor has it that an especially large, clever snake tricked Nosh Nosh biting her. It made her sick for days. And it's right there, waiting, watching. Uh, you've beaten and eaten snakes before. Time to t eat another? Or call everyone and get out of here? Uh, let's see what we could do. You slowly creep up on it, sharpening your claws. Suddenly, you stop. A print in the dirt is clever. It's clearly from Nosh Nosh's foot. And that's definitely dried monster blood around it. Uh, use yourself as bait, be the trap, or lure the crafty serpent into a trap so it cannot bite you. We'll have to lure it. 
Uh, you perch on a branch above a crude snare and beat two rocks together to attract the snake's attention. This goes on for some time. Uh, just keep beating those rocks. Suddenly, the snake drops from a branch above you. You struggle, but it's too late. It crushes you with its terrible strength. Uh, everything's getting darker. The next thing you know, Nashnas has pounced on the snake. She grabs its head and holds its mouth shut, keeping its fang trapped. But we're still being crushed. Nashnash bites the snake's head off and swallows it. You grasp as the coils loosen. Nashnas is carried through Omen by a group of cheering monsters while you are left to recover on your own. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That was that's terrible. A flock of geese are in the square. No honk. You can talk honk above the din honk. Nosh Nosh screams. Last one to drive them away is the loser. And she's on that human scooter she found. Uh, hunt down a cool secret weapon of your own. The stick is mightier than the wheel. Sabotage or just grab the scooter for yourself. Uh, we'll get a cool secret, whatever. You run to Homrag's hovel and steal, uh, borrow the fox pelt he uses as a doormat. Plonking it on your head, you run towards the geese, growling and yipping. The geese swarm you. Oh no! You can think of two good options. Think fast, out honk the geese, or fury and fear unite attack. Uh, we're gonna attack the geese. You bite a goose in two and grab three more, creating a tornado of feathers. Nosh, Nosh jumps off the scooter to join in the feast. Mm, you're my friend, she admits. Mouthful. <laughs> I guess we won. I guess. Um, what's the spider one? Today's a day of the Spinner 500, a big spider race. Winners are regarded highly by all around town. Uh, let's do this. But your spider hurt her leg this morning. What happened to her? Or what should you do? It's a noble race. Watch with your spider. Cheat. She's normally the fastest spider in the world, even the playing field. Or may the best spider win. Enters yours unaided. Uh, we want to win. We need to get some. Oh damn. You feed your spider a fly soaked in horribly strong coffee. If they knew, the judges would make a rule against it, but who's telling them? She darts ahead of all the other racers and wins easily. Oh, yes! And drops dead at the finish line. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes, your spider is dead, but you earn the prize. A bag of candy and kudos all around. Uh, we'll share the candy, because... Yeah. Everyone who was your fan is now your biggest fan. Some of the younger monsters are fighting over who likes you more. That gained us some respect, at least. Paula ticking seems to get us more respect. I'm not very good in the field, apparently. You find Blots hitting a dented alarm clock. Uh, why have bells that don't ring? Uh, is this some kind of riddle? Before you can answer, he throws the clock over his shoulder and glowers at it. Glowers. Um, try to fix it? You pick up the clock and examine it with care. It's so complicated. More complicated than anything a monster has ever made. And that includes monster links. Wheels and cogs and gears and levers and slides and all kinds of things. Um, let's poke at the clock. Even though it's so complicated that you might get your claws caught inside of it. Uh, or get a spring to the eye. Or accidentally hurt blots. Or hurt blots on purpose, for that matter. Um, let's go for it. Poke, poke, poke. You turn the key round, it makes a clicking sound, then the bell goes ding! Not bad. It's getting harder to turn, though. Uh, can we eat it now? Bite the clock. <laughs> um, you either stop or keep going. I mean, we've gotten this far, let's keep going. Oh, you turn the key some more, it uh, resists for a moment, then you turn it harder and boing, whoops, pieces everywhere, you pick up gears out of your mouth and help Watts clean the blood out of his eye. Damn. Should have stopped. You never know. You sit with Nosh Nosh and Cop Claws on a tattered red blanket, eating cookies and talking about artifacts. Um, what artifacts? Artifacts are human made objects. Many monsters collect them. All the garbage cans and omen were collected from one human bus stop. Some artifacts are interesting, some can be dangerous. You sit with Nosh Nosh uh, on a tatter, eating cookies and more cookies. Uh, Gob Club size. I really like artifacts. I want a nice big collection, but it seems like I can never find any good ones. You and Nosh Nosh exchange glances. Nosh Nosh runs a claw along the handlebars of her little scooter. You both know some good spots. Um, keep mum. You can help her in other ways or tell them about good spots. Um. We'll just tell them what the hell. You open your mouth, 
butt gasp as Nosh Nosh kicks you hard. I guess we weren't supposed to. Nosh Nosh whispers, that'll be less stuff for us. I don't care if you have less stuff, but if I do, you're in big trouble. She pokes you with her claws and makes her, to make a point. Um... Um, do we want to go honesty? I mean, we're clever. We'll keep it a secret. <laughs> you change the subject and talk about the cookies instead. Tasty things. Garbage cookies are the best cookies. Later on, you and Nosh Nosh uh, walk into Omen with a few new trinkets. Cobblaws rests her chin on her pincers and size. That doesn't mean we can't give her some. Either way. I just didn't want to put her in danger. You look over your Garden? 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 Most hovels have gardens. Many monsters don't care, but some like to show off their herbs, spices, and flowers. How's it looking? There are so many rocks there. Even if you don't feel like planting things, it looks bad. These rocks ought to go. Um, let's start digging. All this work is a lot harder than you expected. You're not a natural digger like Molefoot or Shovel. Shovel, shovel, shovel. <laughs> shovel, shovel. Not all monsters pick good names. Just be glad you're not one of them. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's take a little break. That was weird. Uh, you notice that several monsters have gathered to watch you. Uh, let's get some help. You eye the other monsters warily. Uh, some of them look curious, and none of them look like they enjoy manual labor. Uh, trick some of them or admit you could use help. I could use some help, Nair! Gobclaws and Smark join you. Gobclaws cracks the rock into smaller pieces. Little Smark mostly just sits there. But the work goes well. We'll thank them and we'll continue. We gain some respect. Look at us getting respect. Uh, let's go explore some more. Um, let's do this mouth looking one. You're following a deer in the forest when the trail comes to an abrupt end just in front of the cave entrance. The hoof prints look strange, like the deer double back, doubled back, walking backwards in its own tracks. It's a trap! Okay, so what do you do about it, smart monster? Uh, clearly you should fight the trap, turn the trap against the deer. You walk into the cave and find Hamrag taking one of his famous naps. The huge monster is known for his irritability when he's awakened. A twig snaps in the bushes, the deer is fleeing. Uh, wait for the deer to come closer or draw the deer near. Um, we'll wait for the deer to come. Uh, you wait and wait, but the deer has slipped away in the shadow. Because if we would have woken up the other monster, we may have been screwed either way. Wild chickens are back in season, as delicious as they are mean, they're loose within the whale mist, and the monsters are all hunting them down. <laughs> chickens, lame, forget about it. Uh, find some eggs and just eat it, or get out there and hunt those wild chickens. Deep in the woods, you're looking for chicken scratch. When you literally stumble over a hen guarding a cluster of chicks, the hen clucks and calls at you. Look at that hen! She's huge! Fight the hen or drive the weakest, chick weakest chickens away from their protector. Uh, you chase avian beasts through the night and finally flush a, a puzzle of pullets into the village where Hamrag has a cook pot waiting. I guess that worked. We're, we're pretty smart. We're pretty smart. Uh, the spine doctor has asked you to catch a special fox. It limps, she says, and it coughs. I need it quickly, if at all. Uh, why does she need this sickly fox? The spine doctor swats you with one prickly arm. There's no time for questions, get the fox or don't. Um, fine. You go forth into the forest trailing the fox. As you get closer, you catch a glimpse of its ragged ears between two t trees. The fox is limping, slowly. We'll get a little closer. As you draw near, you smell something, sickly sweet. The fox slumps and vomits green matter onto the forest floor. Your claws tremble at the thought of touching it. Uh... Go back to the Spine Doctor and ask if it's safe. Pursue the fox to the ends of the forest and beyond. Chase the fox, but stop to wash your claws frequently. You don't want to get sick. <laughs> Unfortunately, the fox easily loses you in the whale mist while you're washing your claws in the stream. You're not absolutely sure it was there at all. Uh, could you have imagined seeing it earlier? Probably not, but regardless, you return and you lost some respect because you didn't catch the damn fox. Okay. Alright, time to get mean. You're bringing home a human coat you found hanging on a tree uh, when you see a cat waving at you. Uh, hi cat. The cat is standing on his hind legs wearing human boots and indeed is covered in human clothing. Artifacts! Save me, he cries, pointing to a wolf who has cornered. Get the wolf. Another talking animal? 
Uh, why? Sure, why not? Tears it to shreds. Attack the wolf cautiously. Something's not right. Uh, talk some sense into everyone. We'll attack the wolf cautiously. You leap on the wolf, keeping an eye on the cat. Good thing, too, since the minute your back is turned, he tries to take the coat you found. Let the wolf go and attack the cat. Abandon this entire situation or keep fighting. Um... I'll take the hit from the wolf, what the hell. You attack the cat, but he smirks and runs away at amazing speed. But those boots are magical. We found some magical boots. Huh. Uh, let's, uh, let's do this one. Your neighbor, the elder monster, Alelia, walks slowly in the direction of the broad cave. Who's Alelia? She's one of your next door neighbors, but she's much older than you. Months and months, she has tough scales and eyes of several different color, different sizes. Okay. Uh, walk slowly. Let's follow her. As she passes down the road, some of the other elders nod to her. Then, as they then go to her hovel and start smashing things. Uh, it's none of your business or ask. I'm gonna ask an elder. What the hell? Reed Blitz stops tearing apart her dining room, ta dining room table and says she feels herself beginning to dissolve. She's going to go release herself and become one with the slime and the spawning bat. Um, what happens when you do that? Monsters who get to a certain age either settle into their personality and shape forever, or they let themselves become one with the slime for which they came. Their personality can have an effect on future generations of monsterlings. Okay. Uh... We're going to go thank her for a contribution. You're going to be remembered, Alelia, and we'll see a bit of you in every Monsterling from now on. Alelia wipes a slimy tear from one of her smaller eyes and sniffs. Uh, we'll tell her a joke. <laughs> you ask, what did the talking wolf say to the bear? She pauses, raises six of her eyebrows, and waits for the answer. Uh, you realize you don't have a punchline, but before the silence can grow awkward, her ears fall off. <laughs> She waves goodbye to you and resumes her walk to the broad cave. You never see her again. <laughs> oh, that's sad. <laughs> Alright, what's this one? You hear a cry from a nearby hovel. Uh, what's happening over there? Saswe, a new adolescent, doesn't understand how the windows in her hovel work. She's trapped her paws under the heavy pain. Leave her there, she'll chew her arms off eventually. <laughs> we'll free her from the window. You walk over and take a look. This should be easy for a grown-up monster like you. Scare her a little to teach her a lesson, break the glass to free her. Lift the window to free her. Sasswaite seems afraid of you, but these things happen. She thanks you for releasing her from the window. You notice that small crowd has gathered. Uh, tell her the arm will heal on its own. The other monsters all nod. Some of them seem confused, but the elders in the group explain that what you said is the truth. Monsters heal fast. That uh, gave us a little... Wow, we're at 62%. We're getting up there, guys. We're getting up there. Alright. Alright. You spy a wolf pacing outside a small wooden cabin. From within the building, you hear the bleeding of goat kids. Um... Attack the wolf while his back's turned. Rah! <laughs> he hears you and bolts. Chase him down! Get back here, wolf! You give a good chase, but only manage to snag its tail away before you run out of steam. Nuts. No, the tail. A bit grisly, still not a bad meal. So we ate the wolf tail. Mmm, mm, yummy. A small pack of elder monsters are huddling, huddled at the edge of the omen, watching the woods and discussing something in hushed tones. Let's listen in. Elder Hamrag is saying, this could simply be a rumor. We don't know they're out there for sure. Um, let's see what's going on. The Hamrag says, some of the younger monsters have been uh, have seen others in the whale mist. Monsters from no town we know of, thin and cold, without food or shelter. Offer to host any homeless monsters in your hovel or promise you'll remember the warning. Or suggest everyone to be on guard. Uh, we'll offer to host... The elders are impressed by your unusual offer. They look at each other, and then shift their conversation in the same direction. If the strange monsters come into Omen now, they won't be met with violence. That might come in handy later. Alright, last, we are, we're at day one, or one day left, at 67% respect. You hear Gritmitten telling younger monsters about the human that almost killed him. It's the pointy parts that get you, he says. That's true, because we got shot. Always wait until the knife is pointing somewhere else. Then run away. He turns to you and says, Isn't that right? 
uh, exaggerate the story to strike fear or impress everyone by claiming to be an expert. Yeah, it will explain that they can be very dangerous. Uh, you calmly expand on their tale, sharing what you have learned about the frightening blades of the humans. The young monsters promise that they will treat such things with respect, even if nobody's holding one. I think we're done. Uh, you're growing old, my friend. Your body is very soft, and you drip slime everywhere you go. It's getting hard to leave your hobble. Um, go see the spine doctor. The doctor tells you that your time is almost up. You'll soon reach the end of adulthood, and you will either ascend to elder status or dissolve into slime. Uh, what happens to monsters who ascend? Those who manage to ascend become elders and live on to steer, on to steer the fate of monster kind. Uh, what happens if you dissolve? Their bodies mount into spawning vat where their memories will nourish the minds of new generations. Um, can the doctor do something to stop the process? The spine doctor says there is a treatment that might prevent your dissolution. Uh, the treatment involves an extract taken from the tentacle ferns that grow in the whale mist. Um, <clears throat> let's go check it out. Following the spine doctor's directions, you enter the whale mist in search of tentacle fern. They're common in these woods. You wade through a th thicket of the sticky green coils, uh, letting them brush against your hide until one latches firmly in place. That means it's right. You snip the fern with your claws. What's that sound? It's a little monsterling. Try not to be noticed. Um, ignore the monsterling. Move along. We'll stop for a while. Little monsterling asks, "Why are you dripping so much slime?" Uh, you look behind you and you see a trail of goopy fluids. Uh, eat the monsterling. We'll explain it. The young monster <laughs> seems terrified at the thought of dissolving. She says, "It's not fair. Animals live much longer than we do, and humans longer still." Um, tell her it's natural for monsters and nothing to fear. You remind her that this is the cycle of life and that it's always been this way. We carry in us the remnants of thousands of monsters who came and went before us. She seems reassured. Um, we can explain about it. You, you point back toward Omen, and it's not over for everyone. If the other monsters respect you enough, you can live on as an elder to share your wisdom directly and help care for the monsterlings. She says, I'd like to do that. Is that what you're going to do? Um, tell her you can't ascend once you take your med medicine. You explain that you have a few more things to do, but then you're going to go back to the spawning vat. She nods sadly and leaves you to your task. You return. Um, she takes it from you, and we can watch her make the medicine. The doctor runs the fresh sticky fern through a low flame, studies it carefully, then eats it. What? <laughs> the spine doctor says, there is no medicine. I just wanted you, wanted to give you a chance to think about it some more. Do you understand? <laughs> Kick her butt, or I guess we can nod and accept. We did learn a lot. As you turn to leave, the spine doctor says, I hope you do well. I'd like to see you as an elder. Huh. A group of elders is waiting at the door of your hovel. They've seen your drippings. They know it's time for you to dissolve or ascend. Uh, <laughs> ask them to come back later. Alright, we're going to decide. The elders of Omen surround you at the spawning vat. They've built a fire beneath a small cauldron. Your body is squishy and damp. Um, we can either try to ascend, or we can dissolve, or we can run and flee into the wilderness and probably die. Let's take the test. A masked elder comes forward. She says, It's time to decide. All of the elders growl and snarl. Let's watch. The masked elder claws herself. Three drops of liquid spatter against the hot bottom of the empty cauldron. Thick vapor rises into the air. Was that blood or slime? <laughs> you can't be sure. It depends on how much she respects you. Okay. Uh, the masked elder asks, Who has already decided the fate of this monster? A few of the elders approach the cauldron to add fluid to the co collection. The liquid begins to bubble. The masked elder has placed five flat stones on the ground before you. She says, choose one. Chance will guide your claw. Uh, we'll look at the stones. Each stone is stained with old blood and polished by the touch of many a paw. You can't tell one stone from the other. Alright, let's pick a stone that looks good then. The other side of the stone is etched with a crude glyph. It shows two monsters fighting. 
The mass elder says, we will test your ferocity. No! Ah, oh, two large monsters sees you from behind. Um, they growl and try. Um, ah, oh, fight them both or attack just one monster. I'm not really, like, I have some ferocity, but I don't, I'm more clever than anything. Fight them both or attack just one. We'll do the attack just one. Let's see what happens. Are you sure? The other one may strike you down from behind. It has a 50% chance of victory. It happens just as you feared. While you're tearing into one, the other picks up a rock and clouts you from behind, stunning you. Shake your head, you'll be okay in a second. One elder adds a few drops of fluid to the cauldron, but most of them keep hooting. Choose the next stone. The other side of the stone is etched with a glyph. It shows a monster facing down a human. The mass elder says, we will test your bravery. We have a decent amount of bravery. Uh, let's... Uh, elders add sticks and dry leaves to the fire until it grows huge and hot. They remove the cauldron and retreat before the roaring flames one by one, until only one remain. Let's try to stay. It's hot, very hot, and your body begins to pull away on its own. You gather your will and remain in place. Your excess slime begins to try out, dry out and crack, but as the fire dies down, you're still here. Whew. Several monsters howl their approval and step forward, adding more fluid to the iron cauldron. You hold the cauldron, which contains the portentous infusion. It's heavy. Alright, so if there's enough, we'll ascend. If there isn't, we're done. You drink, and alas, you must dissolve now. Ah. You wade into the spawning vat. It's cool and green, and you feel the aches and pains of your body melting away, along with your body. Ugh. Your hide is absorbed by the surrounding slime. Tiny morsels swim closer to the new source of nourishment. I guess we're melting away. Ah, relief. Your last thoughts begin to form, even as your brain disintegrates. Remember the actions you took in life, or remember the words and ideas that were dear to you. The words and ideas. As your body unravels in the slime, you dream of helping the sick, outsmarting everyone who challenged your mind, or speaking the truth when others lied. Um, outsmarting everyone, because we were very clever. You are a dream of cleverness. You understand, not everything but enough. The bits of you that were, your brain settle on the floor of the vat, still aware for a few moments more. Become one with slime. It is already done. Little minds in need of a first spark begin to awaken. You have helped them come to life. <laughs> your wit and wisdom dissolved into the spawning vat along with your body. May future monsters learn from your example. Yep. <laughs> and our cleverness was maxed out. Oh, our ferocity was at 95%. We should have should have tried that. Ah, uh, that's I'm pretty sad now. Farewell, clever monster. Your essence will become part of all monsters from here until the end of time, for what it's worth. We did it. And there it is. We got our cleverness badge. What happens if I click it? Okay, so we can go through all this. I'm not going to play through this entire game. That's a lot. It's a lot of talking. My head actually hurts from all the talking. Really weird. My throat's dry. Um, but that's it. Monster loves you. Uh, you're gonna want to try to go through and collect all the badges, I assume. Very cool game. I really liked it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, my choices are all, really all over the place. I never really thought of what kind of monster I'd want to make. And it's cool. It's really cool. Because you never know what's going to happen in the end. And your actions really do affect what happens. So, um... I guess that's it. Monster loves you. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. If you want to see more, or if you have a suggestion for me to try one other playthrough, I will definitely take that playthrough and see what we can do. Uh, but for now, I'm done. We're done. We're done. So, until next time, I will see all of you in the next video. See ya.